Let's discuss about chemical equilibrium. This shows the reaction of nitrogen gas N2 with hydrogen gas H2 to form ammonia or NH3. Ammonia is an essential component of plant fertilizers. As we know, plant needs nitrogen for them to grow. But of course, uh, we also have nitrogen on the air. It's N2, but here the N are triple bonded to each other. So plants will be having a hard time breaking this triple bond to get this individual nitrogen from this molecule. But on NH3, so this is single bonded to each other so it's much easier to get this to to break this single bonds in this molecule than get the nitrogen so again plants need this nitrogen for them to grow now again we can make ammonia from nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas but there's a problem because this ammonia if we leave this one in a container this also returns back to form N2 and H2. So this one is actually a reversible reaction. This is emphasized by this symbol. So this means this is a reversible reaction, meaning these reactants are forming the products and these products are forming the reactants. Of course, uh, again, there's a forward reaction and also there's a reverse reaction so this is going at the same time so obviously over time there, there will be an increase and decrease on the concentrations of these substances but over time the concentration of these substances will remain constant that's because the rate of forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction so here the forward reaction and the reverse reaction is still ongoing but here uh, the concentration will remain equal or constant because the speed of the formation of the product is equal to the speed of the decomposition of the product. We call this state as chemical equilibrium. Of course, equilibrium means balance. Again, here it's the state where the forward is equal to I mean, the rate of forward is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. Now, let's, again, th this can be broken down into two reactions. We have, again, the forward reaction. The forward reaction is equal to N2 plus 3H2 forming the two ammonia. Then we also have the reverse reaction. The reverse reaction for this is this one. We have 2NH3. And then this forms your N2 and then your H2. So again, th this is composed of the forward then the reverse reaction. Now let's discuss about the rates of this reaction. So for the forward reaction, again, the rate is equal to some constant times the concentration of the reactant. So the reactants on the forward reaction, that's N2. Now here we are going to raise this one by their coefficient. So here, the coefficient of N2 is 1, so that's to the power of 1. Here, the coefficient of H2 is 3, so that will be the power on this equation. Now, that's the rate law, or the rate for the first, or the forward reaction. Now, for the reverse reaction, we have the rate is equal to some constant. Again, that's times the concentration of the reactant. So the reactant on the reverse reaction is the NH3. Again, this will be raised by its coefficient. So here, the coefficient is 2. Again, this is the forward reaction. This is the rate of the reverse reaction. Now again, on a chemical equilibrium, the rate, is e the rate of forward equals the rate of the reverse reaction. So meaning the rate of this is equal to the rate of this one. Now, we can say that again this is also equal to this one so let's put it here one this is the for the constant for the photo reaction this is the constant for the reverse reaction now we can say again that the that's k1 times n2 times h2 to the power of 3 is equal to this one again all of this are equal that's a chemical equilibrium so that's equal to the rate that's nh3 to the power of 2. Now, we can still do some adjustments here. So let's try to put all the constant on one side and the others on the left side. This will give us this one. K2 over K1 is equal to the concentration of NH3 
raised to the power of 2 over n2 raised to the power of 1 times h2 raised to the power of 3. Now these are now these are constants and their ratio or quotient is also constant. So we can write this one as k. Now we call this as the keq. So again, the quotient or the ratio between these two constants, we call this as the equilibrium constant. It's equal to, again, just copy this one. We have the concentration of NH3 raised to the power of 2 over the concentration of N2 raised to the power of 1 times the concentration of H2 raised to the power of 3. Now, we call this expression as the equilibrium constant expression. This is the expression equal to the equilibrium constant of a reaction. So we can say that, again, it's equal to the concentration of the products raised to their coefficient over the concentration of the reactants, each raised to the respective coefficient. Okay, that's the equilibrium constant expression for this reaction. Now, let's practice doing this. Now, uh, note, by the way, that for equilibrium constant expression, we do not include the pure solids and pure liquids because they are constant. So, their concentrations do not change. So, their value is kept at 1. Okay, let's try doing the equilibrium constant expression for the first reaction again. That is, the KEQ or the equilibrium constant is equal to the concentration of the products. The product here is the, the product here is the NCL3. That's NCL3. Then again, raised to each, to its coefficient. So here, the coefficient is 2. So that will be the, the power here over the concentration of the reactants. The reactant here is the reactants are N2 raised to the power of 1 times the concentration of Cl2 raised to the power of 3. That's the equilibrium, that's the constant, equilibrium constant expression for this reaction. Number 2, again, that is the KEQ is equal to the concentration of the products. The products here are N2 raised to the power of 1. Again, that's based on the coefficient here times the concentration of CO2 raised to the power of 2 over the concentration of the reactants. We have the reactants here are NO raised to the power of 2 times the concentration of CO raised to the power of 2. For the next item, we have this one. So again, that KEQ is equal to the concentration of the um, the products, we have Ca2 plus raised to the power of 1 because here again the coefficient is 1 times the concentration of F minus raised to the power of 2. So here the, that's again over the concentration of the reactant. But here the reactant is a solid and again pure solids are not omitted because here their value is kept at 1. Again, they their concentrations do not change so we kept we keep them as 1, that's over 1. So simply, we can simplify this one as this one. So just disregard the denominator, okay? So that's the equilibrium constant expression for number 3. Next, for number 4, or letter D, again, KEQ is equal to the concentration of the reactants. The reactants here are the BA2 plus times the concentration of H2CO3 times the concentration of H2O raised to the power of 2 raised to the power of 2 over the concentration of the reactants. So again here solids are again not included in the equilibrium expression. So we just keep the, the other one. So here we have the concentration of H3O plus raised to the power of 2. Now, for letter E, we have, again, KEQ is equal to the concentration of PCL3. That's the product raised to the power of 1 times the concentration. Again, when it's 1, there's no need to write the 1 times the concentration of the Cl2 raised to the power of 1 over the concentration of PCL5 raised to the power of 1.